Hi, I am a marine scientist and I study coral reefs. And I want to tell you a story about coral reefs, but with this as a backdrop. CO2 is a greenhouse gas and it is increasing in our atmosphere at an accelerating rate. As a result, the atmosphere and the oceans are warming. About 25% of that CO2 dissolves into the surface ocean and makes the oceans more acidic. Over the past 100 years, our oceans have become almost one degree Celsius warmer and 30% more acidic. By the end of this century, the oceans will be one to three degrees Celsius warmer and 100 to 150% more acidic. This is bad for corals. This is bad for coral reefs. So I want to tell you what it's like to be a coral on these reefs. And to do that, we're going to fly to a place where I do research in Hawaii. And as we zoom in, you'll see this little island. And it has a dark rim around the perimeter. That's where the living coral reef is where I do my research. When we dive below the surface, you can see what a typical healthy reef in this part of Hawaii looks like. But what does it feel like to be a coral on that reef in a warming, more acidic ocean? And in particular, when heat waves come through and are topping up that temperature even more. And I want to tell you that story from the point of view of a coral called Cora, who lives on a reef just like this. It's hot in here. Have you noticed? It's boiling. It's been at least two degrees Celsius warmer than usual for several weeks, and I just can't take it. I've upregulated my heat shock proteins, and it's not happening. And don't get me started on my endosymbiotic algae. They are not doing their job. Normally, they photosynthesize a ton and give me all kinds of sugar to eat and keep me really well fed. In exchange, I give them nutrients from the zooplankton that I eat, and we have a really good symbiosis. But when it gets hot like this, they shut down. And on top of that, they start giving off all these free radicals that really interfere with my cellular function and cellular integrity. So I think I'm just going to have to get rid of them because they are, they're just messing it all up. So I'm going to get rid of my endosymbiotic algae. Are you ready? Here we go. Wow, I feel a lot better, but naked. <laughs> because now, without my endosymbiotic algae, you see right through my clear gelatinous tissue to my skeleton, and I look so pale. I look bleached, like this image, bleached. And in this bleached state, I don't feel good at all. But I'm doing so much better than that guy over there. He bleached a week ago. He's really doing badly. But the problem is, I am starving. Without that sugar coming from photosynthesis, I am so hungry. I know what. I'm going to eat more zooplankton. That, that'll help. That helps. And for some of my coral friends, that really helps a lot. But it's not cutting it for me. It's just not making me feel full. And if this keeps going, I'm going to start losing weight. I won't be able to calcify. And this means I might die. My friends might die. What is going to happen? I can't go anywhere. I'm a coral. I'm planted here. I'm stuck here. I can't run away from this problem. And you know, these warm events, they never used to happen. They only started about 40 years ago. And now they happen every three to five years, and they seem to be happening more and more. What's going to happen if this continues? And to top it all off, it's getting a little more acidic around here, and it's making it that much harder for me to calcify. This is not a good state. What will happen to reefs? What will happen to me and all the other corals and the fish who depend on this ecosystem and the humans who depend on this ecosystem for their livelihoods and for food? What will happen? What will happen? Well, at the current rate of warming, Bleaching events are expected to become annual occurrences in some parts of the world within the next few decades. By the end of this century, bleaching events could be annual events globally. And by the end of this century, 60%, 60% of coral reefs will be lost. And coral reefs may not be able to keep up with sea level rise. So why should we care? 
Well, when reefs degrade, people's lives and livelihoods are jeopardized, economies crumble, and people migrate. When reefs degrade, the fish that depend on the corals that build the reef and that provide hiding places and mating places and sleeping places, the fish that depend on those reefs, their numbers decline. The humans who depend on that fish for food or for their livelihood, their livelihood is jeopardized. When reefs degrade, the homes and beaches that are protected by reefs during storms are at risk. When reefs degrade, the jobs associated with all of the services that reefs provide, the hotels, the beaches, the scuba diving, those jobs are at risk. And when homes and lives and livelihoods and jobs are at risk, economies become fragile. And in many parts of the world, reefs play a major role in their economies, so that if reefs degrade, their economies degrade. And when jobs and economies start to crumble, it has ripple effects globally, and those people start to leave. So when reefs degrade, it affects all of us. And we are all responsible for this problem. The source of this problem is CO2. When we drive our cars, heat our homes, buy stuff, all of that produces CO2. And all of it goes in the atmosphere, circulates globally, and has a global effect, not just on coral reef ecosystems, but on all ecosystems. We all are responsible for this problem. The United States emits more CO2 than any other country in the world other than China. But we also can fix this problem by doing things on an individual scale and by doing things on a national scale. Individually, things that seem seemingly unimportant turn down the thermostat just a smidge in the winter or up a tiny bit in the summer or reduce the temperature on your hot water heater or unplug the toaster when you're not using it. They seem so trivial. But when you take teeny, teeny, tiny savings and you multiply it by a large number of every person in this country, it becomes a real number. It becomes a way of effectively reducing our CO2 emission rate. On a national scale, by reducing GDP by as little as 0.14%, we can control the rate of CO2 emissions according to the last IPCC report. Nobody's lifestyle has changed. Nobody's um, ability to live the way they want to changes. We make microscopic changes that affect the rate of CO2 emission and allow us to control the CO2 problem. And when we do this, we become good stewards, not just of corals like Cora and our coral reefs, but we become good stewards of our planet and good stewards of our fellow human beings. Thank you.